Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. We've got another Chrome box to take a look at. We haven't seen a new Chrome box in quite a while. This one comes from HP. This is the Chrome box G2. And you'll recall we reviewed the original Chrome box probably about three or four years ago on the channel. So it's been a while, uh, but this one is running with a new KB Lake processor. And there are a couple of different configurations you can choose from. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. You'll notice this has a Chrome logo at the top because it is running Google's Chrome OS. That means you can't load Windows apps on this just yet. Uh, but it is now compatible with Linux apps, which I detailed in a video I did a couple of days ago, which I'll link to down below. So Chrome is getting a lot more useful. Uh, this can, of course, also run Android apps from the Google Play Store, too. I'll show you how some of that works a little later in the video. So it's got a lot more to it now than it used to have. Uh, but if you are expecting a Windows device that can run Windows software, uh, this is not the device for you. Now this one costs $200 as configured. Inside it has four gigs of RAM, a 32 gigabyte SSD, and it is powered by an Intel Celeron processor, the 3865U. And this is the KB Lake family of processors, which is in the same family as the i3, i5, and i7 chips that we typically see on mid to high end desktop and laptop PCs. So conceivably, this processor should be better than some of the chips we see on a lot of those $200 mini PCs we look at running with the lower powered Celerons in the Gemini Lake and Apollo Lake family. However, things have been catching up on the low end. And as you'll see a little later, uh, you might actually do better now with a Gemini Lake chip than this KB Lake chip for the kinds of things uh, you might do with a Chromebox. Again, these are really not gaming machines. They're mostly web browsing and productivity kinds of devices. And I was surprised to see uh, what I ended up seeing on some of my benchmarks. So we'll get to all of that in a little bit. Now, they also have a version of this with an i5 chip. That one's $549. You can spend up to $789 and get an i7 chip with 16 gigs of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage. So as this Linux thing becomes more of a thing, uh, perhaps some of those higher end boxes might make sense for folks, but I think for 200 bucks, it's a pretty capable Chrome machine. Let's take a look at the ports on here. On the front, we've got a combo headphone microphone jack. We have two USB 3.0 ports here on the front. I've got my keyboard uh, trackpad dongle thing plugged into it right now. You have a micro SD card slot for augmenting its onboard storage. On the back here, we've got a USB Type-C port. You'll see a little lightning bolt next to that. That does not mean it is a Thunderbolt port. That's a different lightning logo. Uh, this actually just has video out and data out and in. So you can plug in, for example, a, uh, an external display to this with the USB-C, uh, or you can plug in a USB-C data device, but it doesn't accept power going in. However, that lightning bolt there means that you could charge a device while the computer is off if you plug it into that port. These ports continue to be very confusing and not every manufacturer is implementing them in the same way. And once again, we've got a port that can do two of the three things that most of these USB-C ports can do. So you will need to plug in power separately here in the power jack right there. You have an HDMI output here, so you can do dual displays if you use the USB-C port for the other display output. You've got another USB 3.0 port here, and then here are two USB 2.0 ports that I recommend you use for your keyboard and mouse because these do run slower than the port right next to it. It does not come with a keyboard or mouse in the box. You'll need to pick that up separately. And over here, you've got gigabit ethernet. This is not a fanless device. It does have an active cooling fan built into it. Uh, but to be honest with you, you're really not going to hear it. I haven't really heard it all that much. If it's on, it's on very low. Uh, you'll hear it come on pretty loud when you first turn on the device when it spins up the fan as a test. But generally, uh, the kinds of usage you'll do with a uh, Chromebox here, even some of the Linux stuff I was doing, really did not kick that fan on. So uh, overall, it's a pretty quiet device, but it does have a fan built in. So that is it for the ports on the device. The only other thing worth mentioning here is the uh, Kensington lock slot here on the side along with the reset switch. The device is upgradable. We took it apart on my extras channel. It's not all that easy to get into though. The prior version was a lot easier than this one. 
You can, though, upgrade the RAM and the storage. I believe you can get up to 16 gigabytes installed on here. So you can go with the $200 entry point here. And then if you start doing more with Linux, for example, you could probably swap out that uh, storage on there and get you a little bit more to work with. So there is some upgradability on this, but you can't swap out the processor. Let's see how this performs now with our usual barrage of tests. So let's start off with some web browsing and typically on these Chrome boxes, they uh, load up very quickly because they're a pretty simple device to start with. They get more complicated as you start piling on Linux apps and other stuff here, but you can see how quickly the nasa.gov homepage loads up. We are connected up via a wireless AC connection to my Wi-Fi, uh, so that is doing pretty nicely here. Ethernet works well, and if you have uh, older 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, it will work with that too. Uh, there's also Bluetooth built in, so you can connect up some other devices like game controllers and keyboards and mice and that sort of thing. What we're going to do now is jump over to my YouTube channel and look at a 60 frames per second video here and see how that does. Going to just switch that on now. One of the things we found with Chrome on lower end devices, even Chrome OS devices, is that we often skip frames when we're playing back 60 frames per second content due to how Chrome handles the uh, decompression of the video. Uh, but this one seems to be doing okay. We're not getting, uh, well, we're getting a couple of drop frames now, but generally it's been uh, playing things back pretty smoothly, uh, Thanks, probably thanks due in part to the KB Lake processor that's built into this. And that's one area where if we had one of those Apollo Lake or Gemini Lake chips, we might see more drop frames here than we are currently seeing, about five so far since we got started versus maybe uh, five or 10% of the total on some of those other devices. So I think from a video playback standpoint, if you're watching YouTube or Netflix or something, this should uh, probably do okay. Uh, one thing to note though, is that these really are not home theater devices. You can now run Kodi and other home theater apps like Plex on them through an app or uh, just through the web browser in the case of Plex, but they are really not well tuned for that. So I don't recommend these as home theater PCs, but if you're in a college dorm room or something or at the office and want to catch a video now and then, I think this is probably going to play back things just fine given that we're not seeing all that many drop frames here on this 60 frames per second content. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 55.82. And surprisingly, that was lower than what we saw with an Intel NUC running with the new Gemini Lake J4005 processor, which is a dual core chip. Uh, that one came in at 70.9, quite a difference actually. And it's surprising because typically uh, processors that come out of that desktop laptop family do better than what we see on the low end family of chips. But that apparently, at least on that benchmark, is no longer the case. Uh, so perhaps if uh, HP is continuing to make these Chrome boxes, they might want to look at the Gemini Lake chips just because they're better suited, I think, for a mini PC like this one. That was a surprising result on that benchmark. In fact, I ran it a number of times. I even uh, took my device out of developer mode initially and put it back into the regular stable channel. We got a little bit of a performance boost there, but again, we only got up to uh, 55.82 on that test. And it looks like, at least in what that test measures, uh, that lower end Gemini Lake chip now is better than the low end KB Lake processor is. Now, in addition to running the Chrome web browser, uh, the Chrome box can also run Android apps. What you'll get on here uh, is the ability to play a lot of casual games that you might already have on your phone or tablet. And they run very nicely on here as you would expect from uh, one of these Intel powered machines here. So all good on that front. Uh, you also have access to the Google Play Store, so you can go in here and look for some of your favorite apps to see if they are compatible. Uh, if something doesn't show up, it's because it isn't compatible with this particular platform. So not everything's going to be here, but a lot of your uh, favorite Android apps will be. Now this Chromebox is also one of the first devices to support running Linux apps officially on Chrome OS. And in a prior video, uh, we did load up a bunch of Linux applications, got them installed and running on the Chromebox here, and they all work very nicely. Uh, that feature is still in development, so we're going to be seeing a lot more from it uh, as time goes on here, but I was very impressed with how well everything worked initially here and how easy it was to set it up. Uh, so if you're interested in that topic, definitely check out the video I have linked below to learn more about running Linux officially on your Chromebox. So the big question is, who is this for? I think a lot of consumers are probably going to gravitate towards the Chromebooks, which are all-inclusive laptops and tablets. 
This as a desktop machine is probably better suited for the institutional environment, businesses, but probably schools where they already have a bunch of Chrome OS devices deployed. And this is an official higher performing desktop version that will integrate seamlessly into the remote management systems that people running Chrome OS are currently using. So I think that's probably where this one will end up in the end. Uh, because I think for most general consumers, you can get a Windows Mini PC now that's a little more capable, uh, as powerful or more powerful for around this price point, especially when you get into the i5 and i7 versions of this particular Chrome box. But there's a lot going on with this Linux thing, and I'm going to be uh, keeping an eye on that over the next couple of months to see how Google integrates that into the mainline operating system, because that might drive uh, people to buy a more powerful Chromebox in the future if they have the ability to install just about any Linux app on it. So lots more to talk about, and we'll be keeping an eye on this and Chrome OS in general as the year progresses here. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Bill Reiner, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.